So as you're setting up your space to build this, um, have your image nearby so you can work with this in mind. Uh, I want to always, always emphasize preparing your clay. I just wedged this 20 times over there on the wedging table. Watch the video again. If you aren't wedging your clay, this one you need to. We're, we're, we're working with the size and the volume. It's going to require this coil be really well prepared. In order to prepare the coil well, I've prepared the clay well, and I need to keep the coil nice. So I'm going to scratch all this clutter off my work surface. I'm going to wipe it down and make sure it's clean. You're going to need some kind of a fork or a needle tool. This is quadrupling production when you use a fork. A ruler helps. You're going to be taking measurements every step of the way, making sure everything's shaping up. All right. So, different things you can use. On your banding wheel, you can stick your clay right to the banding wheel if you want it to be stuck right in the middle and be there while you're working. But you can't leave it on this banding wheel. You gotta cut it off the banding wheel and you gotta clean this and put it back so other people can use this. So if you're gonna use the banding wheel, make sure you're building your floor really thick. So when you cut it off, you're not cutting through your floor when I say really thick, I'm saying like a half inch because you're taking about an eighth off every time you cut that off the wheel. So you do it like once or twice and you'll get that down to a quarter inch eventually. But if you want to build it already a quarter inch thick from the get-go, then you would use something like this piece of plaster. Now, the clay will never stick to this plaster. And I don't have to take it off of here I can leave it right on here. So I just make sure this is clean. Make sure this is clean. And I know I want to start with the base that's four inches in diameter. And even at the one inch level, it's four inches in diameter. So I'm gonna make a little tiny four inch wide, one inch high band so I can get this foot going. If you want to make a circle, start with a ball. All right? And once that ball is pretty round, then it's easy to just start smashing it. Notice it's pretty circular already. The black shirt really helps with contrast. If you haven't worked a lot of odd jobs, you should try some out. Because even this skill, as much as it is my experience with clay, it always brings me back to that high school pizza shop. Working at Original Pete's Hand Tossing Pizza Dough. Or Focaccia Bread. Go check that out. Pretty flat. close to a quarter inch. It's a little thicker on the edges, but it's pretty close. You can always like double check it. It's like three eighths, not bad. Is it four inches in diameter? It's greater than four. There's one more. There's another. So if that's a four inch diameter, then I'll just draw a circle. So 
So I've got a couple marks. There's a mark right there, and a mark right there. So that's four inches between those two marks. If I just hold my fork here and turn it, I'm basically making a circle. It's four inches in diameter, okay? And because I'm using this fork, it's making four lines. I just did it twice, that's like eight lines. You can either use a brush with some water or a sponge with some water, but I'm gonna just lay some water in those four lines and kind of let that remain soft and wet and sticky. So to prepare a coil, I'm just going to make sure this is clean again. Even that little bit of white clay over there can go away. So I'm just going up like one inch. I don't need a massive coil. I'll bet. A short little coil can get a four inch diameter, one inch tall. I'm gonna try to build a wall that's a quarter inch thick though, right? So, this is way thicker than a quarter inch. But I'm gonna show you how when I put it on there, I'm squeezing it and pinching it. So look, it's like greater than one inch wide right now. As I attach it, it will become less than a half inch thick, close to a quarter inch. So I got some moisture inside here. It's not like dripping wet, but it's like pretty wet. So that texture, let me bring this back. I can crosshatch this now. I can even do that to this one. So if I watch the line that I made, where I described the four inch diameter, my outside hand, in this case it's my left, those left hand fingers are keeping this coil from moving out beyond the four inch line. So I'm squeezing, like pinching and pushing down into the slab. This coil has to first fasten to the slab because I'm standing up and I'm on my feet, my face is actually directly over the top of my f slab. I'm looking downward on this coil. And I'm building it as true to the circle as possible. And I'm achieving that by basically looking at it while I'm p pinching on it. I'm barely squeezing the wall I'm kind of pushing down into the slab, really making sure that the connection has been compressed. So we need that moisture and we need the pressure. You can't just push it on there and you can't just rely on the water as being glue. It's not a glue. And I can cut this extra slab away. I didn't bring my full set of two tools, but this will work for now. I 
Okay. So, that one inch high is four inches wide. Pretty close. So if I want to build on this, I'm going to start looking at this and look for my next measurement. So two inches high, it's five inches wide. Four inches high, it's seven inches wide. Five inches high, nine inches wide. And I'll just keep building. So, all these scraps, grab them. Don't let them dry out too much. Get some extra clay. If you haven't seen me wedge in my hand, it's the same as on the wire. See, there's one, two layers. Those two become four, those four become eight, those eight become sixteen. Do this twenty times, you got a million layers. But if you do it just a few times, you got thousands. Anyway, thousands are pretty good. You can start your coil just by doing this in your hand. I start sort of at the halfway spot and roll it up so the thick part's still down on the bottom. And then I grab that bulb. It's kind of like this tapered carrot shape now. So just go below the thick spot. And it's just a pretty decent coil, but it needs some refining. So I take it to the table where I've got a nice clean surface. I put my fingertips on the table and I use the hard part of my palm back here to do the pressing. The fingers don't really do much pressing. They're just kind of riding on the surface of the table. While the bony part of the palms are the ones that are really kind of slowly pushing down. So notice when I do that, the coil is leaving evidence of getting the table wet. So this skin just got a little dry because the table took the water. This skin got a little dry because my fingers heat the wall. And when the wall gets warm, water evaporates quicker. So this needs a little moisture and this needs a little moisture. put it right on the top. If it drips, it's going to get down on the bottom of your pot and your you don't want the bottom of the pot wet. You want to the very top. And then same with this. I don't need that long coil, but if I just scratch and slip get a little moisture in there. It's not dripping. Put a little slip on that surface. Now this can stick to this. Now I want you to watch this because it's got to go out. I've already done the up part. Now I got to start going out. It's the angle of my hand. My left hand can create a pitch to the way that I attach this. So I'm laying this big thick coil on top of a thin wall. This wall is about 3 eighths. This coil is about one inch, maybe an inch and a half. So my thumb's smashing it into the wall and my 
left hand is angling out. So I'm actually building this in the shape that I want it. So I didn't quite make it, and my clay is splitting. These are all characteristics of this recycled clay. It's pretty amazing stuff, but it does have its certain characteristics that need some more attention. So I'm going to create some slip on this one. And the attention that I'm going to give this, I can't give it now. I need to let that be until I complete the whole ring. So once the course is laid. I talk about it like it's a course of bricks or something. So you have to complete the course before you can handle the shape and the wall thickness. So notice my hand is out here. I'm smoothing these cracks together. I'm trying to keep the angle of the wall the same. You know, it's still flaring outward but I'm smearing a lot of those cracks back together before they become big cracks. And now that like I'm confident that they're starting to heal because of the pressure that I'm putting on them, now I can start to like pinch them a little bit. And now I'm thinning the wall. The wall is basically just expanding by the way that I'm pinching it. So it's getting thinner and going outward. And I'm just gonna let those cracks happen, but I'm gonna heal them up if they're gonna keep coming back. Look at this one's coming back. Just support that outside wall while you're touching those cracks. You can refine these shapes as you're building them. So check it out from the profile. I got a pretty lumpy and bumpy texture there. But that's a vertical one inch high, four inches in diameter, two inches high, and five inches in diameter. I don't know if that's totally accurate. Oh look, I'm already at three inches high. How wide is it? Uh, six and a half. Here, four inches is seven. So if I'm at three and six and a half, I'm on target. So this is going well. I'm not gonna worry about the details of this texture on the outside yet. I'm just gonna let my finger marks be there and I can worry about how this looks when it's all built. So I just want to build right now. The clay is soft. I can connect it quickly. If I build the shape correctly, I can build this whole thing in a day.